SACPA acknowledges that this event takes place on the lands of the Blackfoot people and Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3, and we pay respect to their past, present, and future cultural heritage, beliefs, and relationship to the land. SACPA commits to assist reconciliation efforts by raising awareness of the ways past and present injustices can be reconciled. Today's topic is how important is tourism to our region? So our guest speaker today is Aaron Crane. Um, Aaron, tourism is vital for the success of many economies around the world. It boosts revenues, creates thousands of jobs, and just one of those key um, statistics is one in every 10 jobs in Canada is touched by tourism. Uh, her bio was uh, included in the bio. I get the honor to work with Aaron, as I said, as board chair of Tourism Lethbridge. But more than that, I consider Aaron a friend. So please, everybody, I welcome Aaron Crane. Okay, and thank you all for having me here today. I am thrilled to be here. I have been a big fan of SACPAs for many years, although this is my first time presenting, so I hope that um, maybe you have me back again in the future. So up here on the screen are what we call QR codes. By raise of hands, how many of you are familiar with QR codes? Awesome, great. So I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with technology. I see some nods of your heads that maybe you all do too. But the great thing about these is that we're able to track information. And this is part of my love-hate relationship with technology, is that are we constantly being tracked? But all of that leads to really good information. And that's a big part of the work we do, is finding out the information from people about where they want to go, what do they want to see, and then providing that information out to everybody. So I'm going to leave this up here while I tell you a little bit about myself. Because if you want to take out your phone and you want to click on one of these boxes, you can see the information that is on each one of them. The very first one is the annual review documents. And we actually have our AGM tonight. So what you're going to find on there is similar to the information that I've passed around on all of your tables. There's our action plan for 2024 that outlines our priorities and outcomes. We've got our outcomes power of tourism infographic where you can see the health of the tourism economy in our community. Um, the middle one is an assessment survey, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. The third one up here is a tourism town hall registration, but unfortunately I am here to tell you that that session is already sold out. Surprise, last minute Lethbridge has sold an event out one month prior to the event. Who knew? It can actually happen, folks. Um, so we have almost 100 tourism champions coming to hear um, from our partners at uh, the Tourism Industry Association of Alberta. Travel Alberta, Indigenous Tourism Alberta, and WestJet. So they're gonna be doing some updates for us. But before I continue, just a little bit about me. Um, I actually grew up in Arizona. I am the opposite of a snowbird. It is actually my goal to become a snowbird at some point. Um, being able to spend, you know, summers here in Lethbridge and then, you know, go down for winters, you know, back, back to Arizona would be wonderful. I actually got my start working in uh, managing performing arts centers in both Arizona and California. Then I did take a job with Don King, the boxing promoter, and traveled all over the world coordinating championship boxing events, which was great fun. I actually um, met a Canadian fella in a bar in Australia and followed him home to Canada, and I have been here ever since. Um, coming to Canada, there wasn't a lot in boxing or arts, you know, that I could fall back into, so I reimagined myself, and I went to work in hotels. Um, many of you will have seen that I also worked at the Vulcan Trek station. If you remember when we brought um, Spock, Leonard Nimoy, home to Vulcan, that was, you know, one of the projects that I had the pleasure of working on and a highlight of my career, getting my picture taken with Spock. I'm a huge Star Trek fan. 
Um, I also managed conference and event services at the University of Lethbridge. And before coming over to Tourism Lethbridge, I was the Director of Investment Attraction for Economic Development Lethbridge. So tourism is in my blood. It's what I do. I was actually born at the Grand, I was uh, raised at the Grand Canyon. Uh, my dad worked for the United States Forest Service. He was a fire management officer and coordinated air attack and flew slurry bombers. And my mom worked for the Chamber of Commerce. So this is, this is what I know. I actually um, love Lethbridge. We picked this city, you know, going all over Canada and the United States. We chose this because it had something for everyone. And it is my extreme honor that I get to tell everybody how great this city is every single day. So, this is our Power of Tourism infographic. And again, a copy is on your table or you can find it on our website. But the important thing about this is that it does give us a bit of a snap, oh, sorry, a snapshot of the health of the tourism industry. We look at many different data points to look at this. Tourism is a very unique industry because we, we often talk about it as the tourism industry, but the unique thing is, is that it, it is made up of many different segments of the economy. Like Michelle said, everything touches tourism. When you look at accommodations, you look at food and beverage, you look at transportation, entertainment, professional services, ev the list goes on and on. Construction touches tourism. When we're building hotels, that benefits the entire community. So there are a few things on here that I did want to point out. One is you know, that industry development looking at our tourism business growth and our tourism workforce growth. We've seen a big jump in the last year for tourism business development, which is great, but we are seeing a decline in that tourism workforce. And this is you know, something that you're probably hearing a lot everywhere, and it's something that we will need to address in the near future. I get asked this question a lot, and we're going through this at our AGM tonight, but this is how we are funded. So on the gray scale, you will see that that is our total funding that we are provided and the growth that we have seen in the last few years. In the blue is the funding that is provided to us by the city of Lethbridge. That is the majority of our funding. It does come from all of you, the taxpayers. And we do this work on the previous slide, you'll see there was some economic impact. So let's take 2023 um, to start. Last year we had almost a $1.5 million budget where we were able to leverage almost a full dollar for every dollar that you all provided to us. We went out and we matched that so that we could do more for this community. And that is our goal. We want to not only market, but we want to build business. We want to encourage visitation, and we want to educate everyone about what makes this community so special. This is how we are spending this year's budget. We have a 2024 approved budget from our board of directors. And you'll see here that wages, administration, and contracted services you know, kind of all fall under that administrative um, function. And right now, we're sitting at about a 60% in that administrative function and 40% on the sales and marketing and PR. Now, this is not uh, an unknown split. Many of the organizations, and I bet a lot of you sit on those boards, so you're very familiar with how that works. But it is something that, you know, we always try and even out a little bit more. And I'm just going to head back here really quick to look at this slide. So you can see here in 2024, we currently are not forecasting to um, reduce kind of that a percentage and provide more leveraged funding at this time, but we are hoping that there will be some grants and opportunities and partnerships that we'll be able to 
um, make happen, and then that will push that gray bar a little bit, um, we will increase that gray bar, and by doing that, it also will decrease that 60-40 split down to about that 50-50 split, and that's what we're always striving for. Also on your table is a quick action plan. So our board is made up of 11 board members. I had to think about that because we were 10 in 2023 and tonight we will be expanding the board to a full 11. And back in 2021, they worked and put together a strategic plan. And you can find that strategic plan on our website. But every year, the Tourism Lethbridge team takes that strategic plan and we action it. So you can see up at the top our vision, our mission, the impact statement that we wanna to make to our community. And then you'll see here the four pillars of the strategic plan. They are economic growth, brand development, stakeholder engagement, and organizational sustainability. Now the Tourism Lethbridge team took those and we took the strategic pillars and we turned them into action items. And those action items are be a good host, tell a good story, be a good ally, and do good work. And that's what we wanna do. The top part of this is all of our priorities. These are the big buckets of work that we will be working on. And on the bottom half of that, we've attached outcomes to it. So that way we know whether we've met those priorities or not. And a lot of those outcomes are aligned with the information that is on your Power of Tourism infographic. So again, we can see where we're exceeding and where we're not, right? Where do we need to do work? We are not perfect, we know that, and we rely on this information and these details so that we can shift and, and maybe try something new or you know, abandon the things that aren't working for us and move in a new direction. And that's constantly the work that we're doing. So one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about today, and it was you know, um, one of the QR codes that was up on the screen, and I will put those QR codes back up at the end of the presentation, so that way if you're interested in any of this, you can do it. They're also on your tables. But we are undergoing an assessment survey right now. We have partnered up with our um, friends over at Destinations International. This is an international organization that has done this assessment with over 375 destinations around the world. We are not alone in what we do here, and we're not alone in a lot of those metrics and wanting to track the importance of this in our communities. So they have hired a company called MMGY Next Factor, who creates this survey, analyzes this survey, and then provides us the results. And that's one of my, my requests of you all today. As the Southern Alberta Council on Public Affairs, you all, and again, you're all here today listening about tourism, so I know you have an interest in it, and we'd love to get your feedback about it. It is an extensive survey, I'm not gonna lie, it takes about 20 minutes. You are able to leave and then come back. It will ask for your email address when you go to take the survey. But this is how we're going to measure where we need to go, what we need to do, what are we missing, what are others doing that we're not, and how do we make those shifts? So there's a lot of information that, again, we're looking to learn from all of you so we can decide what works best in the future. All righty, so some big exciting news. Um, Michelle, myself, the, the tourism team, everyone in the tourism industry, a lot of what we do is education and awareness. We want you to be aware of the tourism attractions in our community, and we wanna educate you about why they're so important. Not only do we wanna do that with all of you as residents, because one of our um, top 
market segments for tourism in Lethbridge, I was chatting with Carol about this, is actually visiting friends and relatives. All of you who are bringing in your family and friends here to visit Lethbridge, that's right now what's driving our visitor economy. We also work really closely with the Lethbridge Sport Council to promote sport tourism, and we are promoting business event tourism. And the great thing about those is that unlike just a, tra uh, a traveler who's coming to visit family and friends, those people who are coming for sports or business events, they spend more money while they're here. They're staying in hotels, they're going to restaurants, they're shopping a little bit more. So not all travelers are created equal. They are equally important, but you know we wanna make sure that we're evening out those splits between visiting friends and relatives, sports, business events, national, international travelers. So up on the screen is the tour tourism corridor strategy that was recently announced by Destination Canada. And Destination Canada is our national marketing organization. And they go out into the rest of the world and they talk about Canada into new markets in order to bring people in. And this year they have highlighted that they are supporting three corridors. One of those corridors is the Atlantic UNESCO corridor, right there along you know, the Bay of Fundy. The second one is the Indigenous Lodge Network up in the northern parts of Canada. And the third one, very exciting, is the Highway 3 corridor from Medicine Hat all the way to Hope, BC. How many of you have been on that trip? Spectacular, isn't it? Like there is so much to see and do. Uh, this is called the Sustainable Journeys Corridor from Prairies to Pacific. And you do hit a little bit of everything in there. So we're, we're not sure where this is headed yet. We've been doing a lot of consultations and some connections with them. We are anticipating a strategy plan, an implementation plan, and a funding plan. Now you all know, working with the federal government, lots of fun, and you never know what you're, what you're actually gonna get. So we're awaiting those plans, and we are anticipating that we're gonna need to do a lot of this work. We, we can't just rely on them. It's great that they have highlighted us as a point of interest. How do we take it? How do we action it? How do we make sure that we are ready for what this could potentially bring. A lot of the things that we talked about was making this like a Route 66, right? When we're looking at Canada, here are the major corridors that you should go on, and guess what? Highway 3 is one of them. This also will help with some of those infrastructure needs that again go back to economic development, right? If we can get that highway twinned, not only is that great for tourism, but that's great for trade, that's great for investment growth, that's great for everyone. So it does all tie together and it requires everybody, you know, working collaboratively and moving these projects forward. So one of the things that we're doing to make sure that we are ready for this, and I did use that term specifically, ready in our world is actually spelled R-E-A-D-I, not with a Y, um, because we are working with our partners at the Tourism Industry Association of Canada, and we are training 15 of our tourism businesses on how to be market and export ready. And what that means is that they can confidently welcome those big tour buses of 40 people coming from Germany or the Netherlands or France because we haven't been in that playground up until now. Our partners over at Head Smashed in Buffalo Jump, they see about 200 tour buses coming a year. They come down Highway 3, they go to Head Smashed in Buffalo Jump, they go back up Highway 23 and continue on their tour somewhere else in Alberta. We want to make sure that we are capturing that here in southern Alberta. We want them to come down and still 
go to Head Smashed in Buffalo Jump, but then we want him to come over to Lethbridge, we want him to go out to the Crow's Nest Pass, we want him to head down to Riding on Stone Provincial Park. We want to move them around the region to benefit everyone in our region. So, very exciting thing is, oh, I'm sorry, I have to mention one quick thing. This, I'm glad my slides are reminding me, reminding me this. So as um, we, we implemented the READY program, we called on our partners at Community Futures to help us determine which one of those businesses were best suited to go through this specialized training program because it's not cheap and it's not easy. And we actually did receive some funding from the provincial government in order to do this work as a way, again, to increase tourism businesses and to increase tourism workforce. So our partners at Community Futures, and for those of you who don't know, they are here to help small business. And they exist in Medicine Hat, Tabor, Lethbridge, Pincher Creek and Crow's Nest Pass. And so we worked with them and had each one of them go out and meet with these business and, and evaluate them. You know, are you ready to welcome tours to your business? Do you have parking that's available? Do you have a washroom for everyone to use? Do you have products for them to buy? Are you able to book one year in advance? Because a lot of these tourism operators require that. So they evaluated these businesses and they put forward the recommendation for the 15 of them that would go through this specialized training. And the reason why we wanted to do this is that once these 15 businesses have gone through the training and are accredited by the Tourism Industry Association of Canada, they go on a national registry. And our partners at Destination Canada and uh, the Tourism Industry Association of Canada, they will use that registry as who they're going to promote out to the rest of the world. We want to be on that list. And one of the other reasons we want to be on that list is because they also host a function called Rendezvous Canada, where they bring in tour operators from all over the world. And it's a bit like speed dating. Michelle and I have done it in the past, and I tell you, it's an intense four days where you get to meet with 75 different tour operators, and you have about 10 minutes to tell them all about your region and encourage them to visit here. So this year, we have an opportunity because Rendezvous Canada is being held in Edmonton, which is very exciting. So we went one step further this year, and we are hosting what is called a pre-familiarization or pre-FAM tour. And we have 20 tourism operators that represent seven different countries all coming down into our area for a three-day tour. We're calling it the crown of the continent to the Canadian Badlands. There's a brief description here, but I just want to show you the little tour that they will take. Again, they're leaving Calgary, they're coming down to Head Smashed In, they'll go over to the Fort Museum before they come over to Lethbridge. They'll stay the night here at our beautiful Sandman Signature. We're hosting a lovely event at the Nikayuko Japanese Garden with a locally sourced meal all being provided by our partners at LA Chefs. The next morning, they'll head out to Crow's Nest Pass. Um, they'll visit Frank Slide, have lunch at the Pass Beer Company, which is one of our partners on the Alberta Ale Trail. Um, then they'll head over to Waterton, where, they'll, where they will stay the second night. The next morning, they'll head over to Remington Carriage Museum and Cardston. They'll pick up some lunch, take it over to Riding on Stone Provincial Park for a picnic, and then they'll head back up to the to Calgary, and then we're all headed up to Edmonton for the rest of the week. So again, it is a jam-packed tour, and our goal with this is to bring them back again with their tours. And many of them are doing anywhere from four to six tours a year, and those could be anywhere from 20 to 45 people. So you think about those impacts. 
So I've talked a lot about Canada as a whole, Destination Canada, the Tourism Industry Association of Canada, but what are we doing here provincially on a kind of a smaller scale to really promote? Well, the last year we have spent with Travel Alberta and the Tourism Industry Association of Alberta, lots of acronyms, on doing tourism development zones. We all know that Banff, Lake Louise, Jasper, Canmore, Kananaskis, you know, those areas have been driving tourism in Alberta for a long time, and they will continue to do so. We, we love them. We love that they're bringing people in. We just want now to move people around the province a little bit more. We also know that those areas are often full, and so we need to be able to provide opportunities for others to come down and check us out. So you'll see this list of the 10 tourism development zones that were created. Now, one of the great things about the uh, work that we did around this is that it gave us the ability to measure where we could be 10 years down the road. What is our tourism potential here in Lethbridge? Now, we did get partnered up with Medicine Hat to look at that Lethbridge to Medicine Hat region. Our partners um, at South Canadian Rockies is everything west of Lethbridge along Highway 3. So if you think of South, um, the Southern Rockies as west of Lethbridge and Lethbridge to Medicine Hat as east of Lethbridge. So the ranking for these top 10 Lethbridge to Medicine Hat came in third, and Southern Rockies was um, first. The only one in between us, no surprise here, is the Northern Rockies. But now I wanna show you just what our work actually highlighted, and that is that in 10 years, the potential for tourism in our region could bring us over 3,600 new jobs and over 500 million in additional estimated visitor spend. Now you think about what that could mean to our tourism businesses that already operate locally. This is a, a big opportunity for us. I've listed some of the upcoming projects here. I'll leave them up here. Many of them we've talked about, like the um, Ready Program, the assessment. Um, we do have a town hall coming up. I mentioned it's sold out, which is great. Um, I know there's a question coming around about the culture link, and um, we, we are working on you know, activating that again, but I'll, I'll wait until the question period for that one. But one of the things that I did, oh, you wanna know what, I think I might, I did have a video from our end of the year information, but I'm gonna leave that to all of you because I know we're, we're coming a long time here and I wanna make sure we've got plenty of time for questions. But if you're interested, please go on and watch that. Because one of the things that I really wanna leave time for is this talk about sustainability. Right, you know, how, how do we do tourism in a sustainable way? We've all, you know, heard the challenges that places, you know, like Venice and um, other parts of Italy and Greece have had, you know, when it comes to tourism. One of the reasons why we're so special is because of our natural resources and we wanna make sure that we protect those. And I think, you know, when it comes to sustainability, one of the best things that we can continue to do is having these conversations. So I appreciate all of you coming out here today to, to listen and to learn and to you know, kind of form your own opinion about you know, how you're feeling about Lethbridge, um, especially when it comes to the visitor economy. And I encourage all of you to share that feedback on that um, assessment survey. Let us know what you're thinking. This is the way that we ensure that it is sustainable for the future, right? We're all gonna, you know, we're gonna make mistakes. I'll tell you right now, we're not perfect, but the more that we learn and the more that we have your insight and information and feedback, that's how we ensure that we're making good decisions and that we're moving our community forward, not how we see it, but how all of you see it.
So thank you again for having me. I'm going to see if I can. Yep, yeah, there we go. So here are our three QR codes once again. One more time, the last one. You can try and go on there and get a ticket. We'll see. But uh, the first one, again, is to our annual review documents. We've got all the information that's on your table, along with our financial statements. Go on there, check them out. You'll, you'll see um, and be able to evaluate the work that we do right there. And then the one in the middle is, once again, that assessment survey. So if you do want to share your feedback, I would greatly appreciate that. And once again, all you have to do is pull your camera out, um, point your camera at one of those code boxes, and a little yellow link will pop up. And if you just click on that link, it'll take you right to that site. Once again, I'm Erin Crane. I'm always open for feedback and information, and I look forward to connecting with all of you. Thank you. So next week's topic and presenter is Nathan Newdorf. So I'm sure the room can be stacked to hear what's happening on that provincial level. Ask him tourism questions. Ask him tourism questions. Yes, yes. So now we're going to start the Q&A portion. So I invite people to come along this wall to ask questions from the podium. Um, please state your name um, and keep the preamble short. Um, before respectfully asking um, topical questions. Um, and then after you've asked your question, if you can uh, return to your seat. So let's start with you. And do you want me to take the microphone, Canoon? No? Oh, you're right here? Okay, you come up right to the podium. Hi, I'm Veronica Kordakowski. I'm just wondering one thing that uh, I thought was missing, and I'm just wondering what your initiatives are for um, working with tourism to make it more accessible to people with uh, various disabilities, whether it be sight, hearing, mobility. So if you could talk to that, please. Oh, great question. Great question, Veronica. Uh, and I'm glad I get the chance to talk about this because one of the initiatives that we are doing with our partners at the Lethbridge Sport Council, we've been working with them quite actively on promoting new sporting events. Many of you will remember that um, we hosted the Tim Hortons Briar back in 2022 and also the um, uh, Provincial Indigenous Hockey Tournament. Um, and those two events bring a lot of economic impact into our community. So one of the um, events that we've been looking to go after are a lot of those Paralympic events. And this accessibility you know, question has come up quite a lot. So we will be doing a lot of work to you know, look at our community and do asset lists about what does that look like? You know, which one of our hotels are, you know, accessible? What about our restaurants? What about the facilities that everybody goes to? And what are some of those changes that we need to make in order to be able to host those events? So unfortunately, it has kind of been um, started on an event side of things, but I think once we have all of those things in place, those are things that should be shared broadly in order to entice others to come forward. So I appreciate the question and hope that, yeah, connect with me afterwards if you need more information. Come on. Hi, Erin, my name's uh, Tom Muffet. Um, you know, the, the last few years, I've been spending a lot uh, more time traveling uh, in the area of Southern Alberta and so have uh, friends and family and that's due in large part to the fact that I joined the uh, group uh, of electric car owners. And there was that wonderful initiative by South Grow a few years ago where they went around and put car charging in all the small towns in southern Alberta. And uh, I was just wondering if uh, you had heard anything or were uh, looking at anything uh, bringing that kind of uh, connectability to some of the venues and destinations here in Lethbridge and in uh, other places in southern Alberta. For example, uh, the Galt Museum would be a great place to plug in if you were planning a visit there. Yeah, love it. 
Thank you for that. I will say first and foremost that uh, that work is, is out of my scope that just really fall within the city infrastructure and planning. However, we work very closely with our partners at South Grow and Alberta Southwest um, who were instrumental in putting that P, um, Peaks to Prairies EV network together and we talk about it a lot. We've also started doing a lot of natural resource tours because that's another one of those things that really makes Southern Alberta special and helps us stand out from other destinations, which is really important in the work that we do. Um, talking about solar, wind, um, our water, and our fantastic soil, right? And the things that, um, again, are foundational to all of the work that we do. But to go back to your question about, you know, have we been doing work to uh, encourage some of our attractions to go down that road? We certainly have. And our partners at Nikiyuko Japanese Garden have worked very closely with the city. And you'll notice an EV charging station right outside of theirs. Now, one of the challenges that we have on that front is once again infrastructure. How are we tying into the grid? Where are those grid points? Because that's often a barrier for us. So we may have a fantastic attraction, but not have that infrastructure in place. So again, I appreciate the question. We do, we do talk about it, um, but we, we are limited to the steps that we can take. Hi there, my name's Christy Thomas. I have two quick questions. So the first one is, I come from uh, a labor background and we have missed out on a lot of opportunities here in Lethbridge because we actually don't have any unionized shops here, no unionized hotels, no unionized conference facilities. And I know it's not your job to organize, but I'm just wondering if, if you've heard that complaint in, in your office. Uh, and then the second question I have is, can you explain a little bit about the money piece and how much money will actually stay in our area? I, I hear all this and a lot of the money is going to like multinational corporations or big tour operators, et cetera. And I'm just wondering how you can maybe piece together how much money is actually gonna stay and, and, and you know, help an individual like myself who, who would live in this community. Thank you. Oh, that one's loaded. There's a lot in there. Okay, so um, first and foremost, you know, I haven't heard anything about the, the labor front and the unionized discussion, but you know, that is an interesting um, conversation to be had. And I think this will come up because we, we are starting those labor conversations, right? Again, on the power of tourism infographic, we saw that 11% decrease in our tourism workforce, and that's alarming. Right, because again, a lot of those businesses do rely on that. And I think this you know, kind of helps to um, answer that second part is about how much of that actually stays in our community. And a big thing that we have been working on uh, a lot over the last two and a half years is tracking that economic impact so that we know, right? Um, you'll remember with the Tim Hortons Briar that the city of Lethbridge actually put up a million dollars to bring that event to our community. And I think a lot of people were very concerned, like, oh my gosh, that's a million dollars of our taxpayer dollars. What are we going to get back from that? So we actually did a study to look at, you know, what were the impacts. And I will tell you folks that we got $16 million back in direct impact to the city of Lethbridge. It was over 20 million back to the province of Alberta. And so I think these numbers are really important. Now, one of the things that we've been doing, and you'll see it on that um, Power of Tourism infographic, is that we do track direct economic impact for the events that happen here in Lethbridge. It is not a perfect system. We are only as good as the information that we get from the event organizers. And we are also right now dealing with uh, an outdated economic multiplier that we use in order to come up with that information. So we do have a lot of work to do to modernize that system and make sure that we're tracking it accurately. But we have been doing this for a number of years, so we know we're seeing you know, kind of apples to apples right now. We will innovate it at some point. But um, what we know is that for pretty much each traveler, and again, I, I kind of talked a little bit about this, that not all travelers are created equal. 
a traveler coming from just within Alberta, on average, per day, spends about $200. A traveler that comes from um, the rest of Canada to Lethbridge spends about $400, so double that amount. Again, hotels, restaurants, they're on vacation, they're spending just that much more, they're going to the experiences, they're getting the Yukata dressing package at Nika Yuko and walking out with a cookie and a, and a coffee from Cleo's. But this continues to go up, right? If you look at US travelers, that number again almost doubles, right? We go from 400 to 800. And if we're looking at an international traveler, someone coming from overseas, that doubles once again to almost $1,200. So this is why, once again, those those tour buses, those tour operators, even though some of those funds are going back into their pocket as revenue and profit, what we see from in our hotels and in our restaurants and in our attractions, that's all business. And that supports our labor market. And that's when we start to grow that labor market, which is why we, we focus so heavily on it. Thanks for the question. Hi, I'm Bev Mundell Atherstone. Uh, thank you so much for your talk. I'm glad you ended with sustainability because that was running through my mind as I was listening to your talk. So are the coaches and buses you use for the tours electric? Following up on Tom's question. And with natural resources like forests burning the wildfires, what impact did the fire and smoke last summer have on tourism in Lethbridge, and how have you prepared for fire and drought events this summer? Wow, y'all are bringing, bringing the heat. Woo, these are tough questions. Uh, all right, so uh, first and foremost, Bev, I'm gonna be honest, I doubt a lot of those motor coaches are going to be electric, right? We see them all on, on the road, right? You look at Red Arrow, Tracks, National, all these big tour operators, they are still operating gas-powered and diesel-powered motor coaches. So as much as I would love to say that, um, you know, the province of Alberta would, and even Canada as a whole, would encourage those tour operators to put those things in place, I think this, you know, again goes back to the previous question about, you know, we see so much of that economic impact that right now, you know, there's always that balance of what are we willing to give up in order to become what possible, what we need to become, which is less reliant on natural resources. Um, now back to the sustainability question. Um, oh gosh. I don't, I don't know specific numbers about what the, the smoke and um, you know, the effects on the fire caused for us. There was a lot of displacement that moved many of the people from the north down to the south. Um, we did see some, some increased visitation. I hate to call it visitation because that sounds positive and this was anything but. Um, however, Again, we don't have anything trackable. Now, how do we combat this in the future? What if something like that happens here in Lethbridge? Like it has so many times before, you know? We dealt with this uh, a few years ago. And I am happy to say that the city has put in some of those protocols. Um, we have been uh, part of some of those conversations, not as many as I would have liked, but we are pushing that envelope and I think that those things exist. Um, like many of the questions, that does fall a bit out of our scope of work, but we know we play a role. And oftentimes in those terms of crisis, I mentioned that I worked for the University of Lethbridge, and we were the response center during the High River flood. Many of you will remember that that you know, we were one of the evacuation centers. 
And this is where, you know, tourism often gets pulled in. Your hotels, your restaurants, everybody needs, you know, shelter and food. And that's one of the things that our groups can provide. So we should be playing a larger role in those discussions. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Deb Rakus. Thanks for the presentation. The most interesting to me was your, uh, you were talking about the tour, big tour operators coming before the Edmonton conference and you were getting um, to some of the features in Southern Alberta. Great. Uh, myself, when I travel, I am what I would consider an activity-based traveler. And when I talk to people and encourage them to come here because I think I live in a unbelievably great province and certainly southern Alberta is wonderful if you don't have a car you are not going anywhere and the big tour operators need little tour operators they need local guides if I go online this morning which I did and looked up Viator and get your guide and southern Alberta it's a blank slate so I'm just wondering if you have given any consideration to how you will encourage and help to grow small local operators who can put together day hike packages, day cultural packages to get out to a, ver a variety of places. Thank you. That, yeah, wonderful. Okay, where do I start on this one? All right, so yes, we have seen uh, an incredible decrease in our tour operators and especially transportation providers since COVID. In 2019, we probably had about six um, independent tour operators that were doing that exact work. And again, as you all know, hopefully, that tourism was the first hit during COVID, it was the hardest hit, and we are still recovering from it. You know, I, I always cringe a little when people say, oh, you know, COVID is over and all of our industries are back. And, you know, oftentimes we even hear this sometimes from our provincial partners that they're like, oh, we've recovered. And I'm like, no, we haven't. We are still missing huge gaps in our tourism providers. And independent tour operators, transportation, that is the missing link. Now, our philosophy that the way to combat that is demand, right? Demand, you know, initiates supply. So we are also working with our partners, again, as I mentioned, at Community Futures, Economic Development Lethbridge, uh, the BIPOC Foundation, um, to encourage some of those young entrepreneurs who are looking for ways to make an impact in the community to, to look at some of this. Um, we also have a few of our small independent operators as part of this ready program to look at market and export readiness. And our goal is that they, you know, maybe start with some of the big stuff, but then that filters down to day-to-day -to -day tours, not just stuff coming in, you know, every month, but day-to-day. -day. And I kind of glanced at, you know, Michelle when I, I, when you asked this question, because we've often dreamed of this. We were like, okay, we're going to start our own tour company, and we're going to be tour operators, and yeah, in our in our spare time, right? So I appreciate the question, and it is a gap. It is something that we need to address and we will continue to work on it. Thank you for your great presentation. I have a couple of quick questions I'd like to pass on to you. I was at a recent uh, tour of the new exhibition building there. It's tremendous. And in the talk we had, they mentioned that two of the drawbacks is that lack of hotel accommodation for big events and the airport, the lack of flights. Mm -hmm. And I could add to that my own personal lack of bus yes. transport and, and a, even a dream, train service. Mm -hmm. So I just wondered if, are, if you have any role in promoting yeah. these things. Yeah. And the other question, uh, well, statement is, I dr drive across the prairies and I am so, uh, what's the word? Oh, interested in everything I'm seeing. It's a beautiful province. There's so much variety out there. But I he hear people saying, there's nothing that's just flat. Where's the, where's the signage? Where's the pamphlets? 
and you mentioned something about the natural resource is in the works, and I think that would be a tremendous asset to either an electronic form or like say pamphlets or signs. I mean, we have sand dunes, we have hummocky moraine, ice thrust moraines. I mean, they, they just, oh, they're just hills, but if they know what they are, it's a fascinating history we have in this province and the associated vegetation zones that are associated with those. So anyway. We're going to yeah. interview you on YouTube. Oh, I know. <laughs> We're going to interview you. I know, yes. Tell us how fantastic Lethbridge is. Oh, gosh. Um, let me first start by uh, addressing um, the Agri-Food Hub and Trade Center. It is a beautiful building. Like uh, A lot of the work we do takes us out into convention centers pretty much all across the world, to be honest. And in my opinion, there is not much that compares to that beautiful building um, over at Henderson Lake. So to be able to go to a conference there, in my opinion, I, I haven't been to one yet, but would just be amazing that you have that spectacular view going back to the natural resources, you know, and again, the, the use of the wood and being able to tell that story is just phenomenal. Now, again, we do have some challenges. Uh, currently, we have about 1,800 hotel rooms in our city. That facility can host events up to 7,000. So in order to uh, capture the opportunities that that new event of space has provided, we need to beef up those hotel rooms. And I did a lot of this work um, back when I first started with Economic Development Lethbridge. I was the director of meeting, event, and partnership development. So my job was to travel around Canada and find um, conferences and events that we could host here in Lethbridge. And this was before that facility was built and we were often limited at that 500 person conference space. Now we have the opportunity to get up into that 750, 1000, even 1500, but we remain limited again by hotel rooms and like you stated, what we call access, because it could be air. And, you know, I, I love our airport, and I think um, for right now, with our hub and smoke model, our airport functions. However, we are missing, you know, road access, um, trains, even to rent a car come down, there's barriers, right? So we have to figure out how we move people. One of the ways that we often talk about with event planners, and we've done this in the past, is we bring everybody into Calgary, and no matter where they land, your first night is always gonna be in Calgary, which again is unfortunate. We lose a little bit of that economic impact again by hosting them in Calgary. You're welcome to our Calgary partners uh, because they benefit from that. But then, you know, we load everybody up on buses. Again, going back to the, the gas powered and diesel powered buses. But when you're sharing that ride with 40 of your friends, you know, those impacts are reduced. And then, you know, just like what we're doing with the tour. Right, we bring people down from Calgary along Highway 3. We've got some great stops. You can stop at the historic Bar U Ranch. You can come down to Head Smash and Buffalo Jump. You can hit the Fort Museum. And by the time they get here to Lethbridge for their three day conference, they're all best friends. They've been on these journeys together. We've showcased the region. One of my biggest fears always is that these big conferences come into our community and they don't ever leave the facility, right? They don't get to see all the great stuff that happens. You know, they go from conference room to conference room back to the hotel and they don't walk through the downtown. They don't go for a hike in the coolies. They don't see all of that other fantastic stuff. So I want to make sure we address that. Are we running out of time? Oh what gosh, I'm darn it! Ask okay. Is I'm gonna have you three ask your questions, like, and then you and then can I'll do go. Yes. Again. Okay. Sorry. Sounds good. I hope I answered that last one. <laughs> Gail McMartin is my name. I'm feeling a little frustrated. I your presentation was wonderful. One huge gap. I didn't hear the word camp in your presentation. I heard lots about hotels and restaurants. I'm a camper for about 50 years. I've camped coast to coast to coast in Canada, 
and most of the United States. We moved here 18 months ago, could not camp because, and as recently as Monday, I phoned the only campground here, $85 a night at the campground, 85 plus GST. We did not have accommodation when we moved here 18 months ago. We stayed at a full service campground out of town for a month at $850. In Lethbridge, that would have been $2,600. You are, I, I, it's, it's great to talk about growing the economy and growing tourism, bringing people in for sports events, terrific. Where are they gonna stay? Not everybody stays in a hotel, is willing to or can afford to, but they will stay in campgrounds. You talk about uh, tour buses. There are also huge organizations in RVs. You talk about, and they go from place to place to place. You also talk about uh, uh, the corridor traffic, which really bothers me, because there's such an opportunity between Medicine Hat and Hope. People could stop here, but it is not a privilege to spend $85 a night in a campground and listen to traffic run through the coolies all night. It isn't gonna happen. And so there are, and not only that, most cities, many towns have town run operated campgrounds. They're very common. I only need to go to Fernie, I can go the other way, any, any, any place outside of Lethbridge, and I can stay in a campground for under $50 a night. Um, I have a, a question that challenges that you love the airport. I'm not the only one in this room, I'm sure, that has been caught going up to get a connection only to find out that the flight's not taking off. And I've had to stay overnight in Calgary because the last one coming in. Now, originally we had a fellow of great ambition in the 60s, 70s called Stub Ross, before your time. And he ran Time Air and he, he thought big and he would say, he'd come and pick you up in his little Volkswagen van, he put you on the plane, you go to Calgary. But he thought big, and he said to every passenger when they got on, where do you want to travel? And he built it that way, to the point where every Saturday, through the summer and late spring and early fall, he would run a 52-seater plane out to Victoria there are loads of Southern Albertans living on the island now. He filled it, and if you didn't book ahead, then you didn't get on it. And I'm wondering, you said think big. Could we find an entrepreneur who is willing to back that? If it's just the once a week, if Stubb could do it, we could do it now. I guess I'm last here. <laughs> but not least. Not least. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Knut. Anyhow, my name is Dan Kurtikowski, and the question, comment, and concern I have is that uh, I'm a huge hockey fan. Anybody that knows me knows I'm a huge hockey nut. And I would like to, because I moved here in 1995, and I've been a huge fan of the Lethbridge Hurricanes ever since. And I would want to know what the feasibility of, we'll say, getting Mayor Hagen and uh, everybody else on board to have the Memorial Cup here in Lethbridge and generate a lot of business and make hockey and life worthwhile. So. I'm a hockey girl 
Thank you. This is what I learned coming from Arizona to Canada is hockey makes life worthwhile, worthwhile right? <laughs> okay, so I took some notes here. First and foremost, camping. Gosh, we need a lot more camping. And this was in the uh, provincial minister's mandate letter was to expand that camping. However, you all have some work to do here too. We have to advocate for that. These are provincial decisions that again come into bylaw discussions. We're having them right now. So make sure you're talking to your counselors about this. We only have one campground in our city. You're exactly, I, I'm not sure where she went, but you're exactly right. And to hear it's $85 a night? What? Wow. So, um, Yes, these are discussions that are ongoing. We know it's a need, not only within our city, but across the entire region. This is happening everywhere. Everyone is hurting for camping. So know that, um, yeah, that is being worked on. Uh, airport, the missed connections. I have been in that position before numerous times. Um, my, my advice on that is make sure that you're booking directly with WestJet. Um, because they will refund that and you can walk downstairs, hop in one of those cabs. I have taken, um, you know, because often it's the 1130 or whatever the 1215 flight is that you get stranded and, you know, I'm not willing to do that. So I walk downtown, I ask everybody else, you know, hey, does anybody else want to go to Lethbridge tonight? Let's split that fare. And often you can work that out in between. These are ongoing conversations with WestJet that we've been having. But the thing to remember here is that WestJet does not make money off of our regional airport. Actually, no regional airport makes money off of passenger travel. They're making their money off of commercial travel. And this is something that we need to beef up quite a bit here in Lethbridge. My concern is at any time, WestJet could pull out and then we would have no airport. So while we have challenges that we need to address, I'm also very thankful to our WestJet partners, you know, that, that they are encouraging this, so. Can you answer other comments about the culture link and what oh. happened? You bet. Um, let me just, uh, Memorial Cup, yes, 100%. <laughs> um, and know that this is part of the Sport Tourism um, Advisory Committee, that this is what we do is we get together and we say, you know, what events could we go after and when? And we're looking at planning, you know, some of those things. So really quickly, Culture Link was an initiative that was started by our partners over at the Galt Museum, um, Fort Whoop Up, because there was a challenge in uh, moving people around the city and especially getting them down into our river valley, right? That is, you know, again, going back to the access question, that's a barrier, right? You know, it's a beautiful area, but it's often a barrier for some of our travelers. So Culture Link was put in to do that. It was funded through um, the city of Lethbridge. And unfortunately, you know, again, we only have so many tax dollars that we can put towards these things. And um, there, there are some, um, some new ideas that we're looking at in order to make it cost effective. One of the things that we're doing at Tourism Lethbridge is we're looking at doing some specific tours throughout the year. Um, we're working on one right now for visitor information providers. These are the frontline workers at our hotels, our restaurants, our attractions, Walmart, gas stations, Safeway, where all of the visitors are going when they're coming to our community. I want every single one of those frontline workers to be able to answer the question, what is there to see and do in Lethbridge? And we're gonna take them around and we're gonna show them, we're gonna pick two days in May, they're gonna go on this little tour and they're gonna be shown each one of the attractions where they can talk about how important it is to our community. We wanna do this later on in the fall for the university and college students because again, we're missing a huge opportunity to connect them to our communities, right? but we're also missing a key opportunity in just residents. So maybe this is something that we, we need to look at, you know, continuing to, to expand. Thank you all so much.